Hey everyone, welcome back to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Today I'm reviewing the latest and greatest obelisk miner. So whether you hate obelisk or you don't, this is their newest miner. It's the SC1 Slim. It's twice as powerful and it's twice as small. Whether you love obelisk or you hate obelisk, they're back with yet another miner. This is the SC1 Slim, so it's the slim version and it's utilizing a new hash board configuration. In the previous boards, they were having some issues where basically the heat sinks would just fall off. That is no longer the case with an improved design. These miners are more powerful now, with the SC1 Slim being twice as powerful as the original SC1 miner, which we've already reviewed here on the channel, which if you remember then, it was making 90 bucks a day, which was pretty wild. This thing is pulling over $90 a day, so almost $100 a day. Unfortunately, as more miners rolled out and the market continued on a downtrend, that profitability is no longer the same. But this is actually still one of the most profitable miners and the actual immersion version of this is the most profitable. I'll get to that unit more towards the end. The immersion version is not really gonna be something, uh, from my understanding, is that you can DIY and deploy at home. It's really gonna be something set up for data center style immersion bins. Just to be clear, the SC1 Slim hashes at about 500 giga hash a second when compared to the original SC1 non-slim with two boards hashes about 500 giga hash a second mining Sciacoin. So with one board, you're getting the performance of two boards in the SC1 and the SC1 Slim can be loaded with up to two boards. So you could be hashing at about 1000 giga hash, whereas the SC1 original could only have up to three boards. So a maxed out original versus a batch two is what they're called, or SC1 Slim, it would never be as powerful as, again, the SC1 Slim. That's the basics of this miner as far as specifications go. But if you're wondering about Sciacoin, what is Sia if you're unfamiliar with it, long story short, it's decentralized cloud storage. Imagine trying to put cloud storage on the blockchain. It's an older project. It's been around for a while. And with that, some good things have happened and some arguably bad things have happened. Basically, what happened was they had their algorithm and they were dual mined with Ethereum. So a lot of people would have their GPU mining rig mining Ethereum and then also Sciacoin. And then some of the big ASIC manufacturers like Bitmain and Inno Silicon created Sciacoin ASIC miners. And naturally they dominated the Sciacoin network. Some of the Sciacoin team created a, another project called Obelisk Tech which set out to make ASIC miners for Sciacoin, Decred, and now they're actually working on a Grin ASIC as well. But the bad news is they had a pre-order and then Bitmain basically punched them in the face with the Antminer A3, which we of course did a review on. Hey everyone, it's Vosk of the Voscorn YouTube channel and today I'm here to tell you how my Bitmain Antminer A3 and ASIC mining rig is making $500 a day? What? And it was around this time where a lot of people well, they got upset. The people who pre-ordered were outraged because their machine was basically obsolete before it had ever even, you know, rolled into the shipping department, let alone their doorstop. Then, or doorstop, that's kind of the theme. These miners became doorstops. So ultimately, the Sidecoin dev team decided to fork off these ASIC miners, which means to invalidate them, they changed the Sidecoin mining algorithm. And they had preemptively planned for this when they developed the obelisk sc1 so those miners were able to mine the original chain and then with an update was able to mine an updated mining algorithm which meant that all the people who bought for example the miner a3s those were actually doorstops now and the miners that were previously going to essentially never break even we're now pulling in q the 90 dollars a day this thing is pulling over 90 dollars a day so almost 100 dollars a day so naturally a lot of people were upset on every side of the playing field here and uh i mean that's just kind of the way it goes it's in a situation where there's no way everyone is going to be happy period there's just no way everyone's going to be happy uh when you go down that road for me personally if you care what i think I think it's kind of funny. I think it's pretty interesting. And at the end of the day, when I take a step back and I take a deep breath and I evaluate this situation and I try to look at it from a couple different lenses, I think that they kind of chose the lesser of two evils. I mean, of course they would protect their own 
vested interest and venture, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't really care if you have an algorithm that's dominated by Bitmain and company, or they want to dominate their own mining algorithm. To date, they've been pretty decent about it all. They've been publicly releasing and selling their miners. They've been releasing batch numbers. And again, at the end of the day, I'd rather have a company like that that is based in the US than another China ASIC manufacturing co that doesn't care about anyone and just keeps producing and producing and producing. At the end of the day, whether you like Obelisk or not, I think that they've dealt the biggest blow to Bitmain and no Silicon that anyone else ever has. So that was a pretty big intro, but now you know the background and the fun story. If it was like, hey, let's have a little bit of minor story time. Who knew this stuff could be so deep and interesting? So looking at the miner, on the mining pool. So just to be clear, they have a new firmware update coming that's gonna make this hash better. So right now I'm hashing a little bit under where I'm supposed to and the new firmware is supposed to fix that, but it's supposed to be you know over a thousand giga hash a second. Right now I'm pushing 914 giga hash at this snapshot in time. Over the last 15 minutes, over a tera hash, over the last hour, over a tera hash. A tera hash would be the equivalent of a thousand giga hash, by the way, if you don't know. And then over the last 24 hours, a little low at 862 giga hash a second. If you look at my daily revenue, it's you know 4,560 Sia coin, which equates out to almost $11 USD. This is a miner that is only using about a thousand watts or so. And you look at the power cost for that, for my electric, you know, it's like 250 or so. So I'm keeping about 75% or more of the money I'm earning with this miner after deducting my electric costs. I'm over here mining on Luxor Tech. They are one of the best Sidecoin mining pools. The only other Sidecoin mining pool that I would recommend checking out is also Sia Mining. I've mined with them before and gotten great results. So as you can see, I've been paid out plenty of times here on Luxor. They've had zero issues with their Sidecoin pool and when they've had issues with their other pools, they've actually done a really commendable job of paying people back. But what's an SC1 worth? If we go to eBay, you know, just look at these eBay prices. We've got one up for bidding right now, $1,800 with four days up. That's a while. We got this one coming over here at $1,600 asking price. This one almost two grand with 12 bids and six days left. And then the Decred miner, which I didn't touch on earlier, but this miner can be loaded with the SC1 boards. So if you can buy the boards direct or if you can you know, get them secondhand or whatever, they can be loaded in here and thus turn this into a profitable miner. Mining Decred with it doesn't really make much money. As far as actually loading a new board into the Obelisk SC1, it's really easy. It comes with a Allen wrench, so it has a supplied Allen wrench with it, and you'll pop off the top. And after you pop off the top of this miner, you're actually just, well, make sure you disconnect the uh, the fan power cords because you're gonna start messing it up if you don't pay attention and do this. Trust me, uh, I almost messed it up. <laughs> and uh, you're gonna pull it down. Once you pull it down, you'll have access to the hash boards. So you'll be able to slide one in or remove one. If you are installing a new board on the SC1 Slim, you actually need to install it in the original board's position and take the original board and put it in the other position. Otherwise, that's not gonna detect the board. This is supposed to be fixed in upcoming firmware, but just in case it isn't fixed or you know you happen to have the same issue, whatever, now you know how to fix it. After that, you're done. Just put the top back on and you're off to the races. I just kinda left it off for a little while because I thought it looked cool. So now you know all about Sidecoin, the background, the miner, the specs. Let's go ahead and jump inside the miner. As you can see, this is what it looks like. If you have one board, you're just gonna have, well, one board and you're only gonna have one of these lines. I've got two boards in here. Remember, it comes standard with only one board. And you get readouts, you get a readout of your intake temp, exhaust temp, which is really, really cool to see. You're also gonna see the voltage, your current you're pulling, your hash rate, one minute, five, 15. As you can see, I have one board performing a good bit better than the other one. Uh, I like the dashboard, I like the dark theme, I think it looks good. If you come over here and click on your pools, you'll see it looks just kind of like every other ASIC miner. For example, if you want to put your SD1 or SD1 Slim on Luxor, you can just copy this stuff from the video description below and you'd come into your miner, you'd go into the pool section, you'd copy and paste that right there, you copy and paste this. Oops copy and paste that, you would replace this with your address, unless you want to donate hash to me, which I'm not gonna stop you. And then you can also put your worker name in there, you know, whatever you want to call it. Maybe maybe you want to call your miner Jim. Well, there you go. Now his name's Jim and that's how it'll show up 
on the mining pool, you can see, you know, my worker ID. He would then in turn be Jim. Why do we name him Jim? Because of Jim Raynor, of course. Password, just leave it X and you'll be thanking me later for fan speed. So there is a trick to regulating your fan speed to get it an increased hash rate. So if your miner is not hashing that well, you would go ahead and put on 50% fan speed and leave it there. For about 30 minutes and then you will reboot the miner okay and then you'll come back in here and set the fan speed to 85 percent and leave it there if you want to just remotely reboot your miner you'll click on system and then come down here to the reboot section if there is a new official firmware release again the new firmware is just a released in beta but it's about to be rolled out to everyone else it'll actually tell you right here it doesn't use the obelisk updater that the uh, SC1 normal one uses, which that was a good program. I was impressed with that one and the fact that it syncs up perfectly, uh, you know, again, is a nice, you know, ease of use addition. I actually did not have success rolling it back um, in the, to the previous version. This didn't work for me. Not that it really mattered. The previous version wasn't doing any better or worse for me uh, personally. And that's the basics of the inside user interface of the Obelisk SC1 Slim. Again, very similar to the Decred and SC1. Well, pretty much the exact same, actually. And as always, keep an eye on your miner. See what's going on with it. Make sure it's in a safe operating temperature range and make sure it's operating properly. Finally, let's run some profitability projection calculations because, I mean, you know, that's kind of what part of mining is about is earning some money, not going bankrupt. Depends what you get into this for, whether it's to secure the network or maybe you're just looking for monetary gains. That's okay, too. So let's look at our day revenue. We'll take my real world numbers here. So for these calculations, we'll look at this day revenue. With the new firmware, we should be averaging 914. Let's go ahead and refresh this, see if we get the you know most up-to-date stuff. 4555, we've got 957 giga hash. Okay, so let's take the number of 5,000. I think that's a safe bet when these get increased in hash rate, they'll have a bit of performance over the original SC1s. So, you know, all of that hash will be going up some, but the originals will not be increased. This is only for the SC1 slims that are going to go up. So, we, I'm, I'm going to estimate to say we can get 25 Psycoin a day, 2,500 with the firmware increase on these miners with one board in it, which is the standard. I'm gonna factor out an average electric cost, we'll say $1.80 a day, to give us down to a round $4, right? How many days earning $4 do you think that you need to break even? Well, if you bought this miner for $1,460, after you paid your electric bill at this calculated estimated rate, over it would take you one year to break even all things considered, okay, so that's saying Psycoin price doesn't go down, it doesn't go up, the network say, stayed relatively the same, which is, you know, all this stuff is actually pretty unlikely, uh, but just to give you an idea, I would also say we're somewhere around the bottom of the bear market, so if Psycoin tripled, well, guess what, this miner would be making pretty crazy USD money every day, plus if you held your coin, you could be having a great time. But on the flip side, things could continue down. So you could be making you know, decent money today with this miner, really actually one of the best miners as far as day-to-day -day profitability is concerned. And if you keep holding and things go down, well, then you kind of shot yourself in the foot because you had a decent thing going. I know we've all been there. Everyone's hodled some things too long and it's, it's a terrible feeling. Speaking of buying these, this is a screenshot from their Discord just to give you guys a little bit of insight. If you want to join that Discord, I'll find the link put in the video description. But this, uh, they have they have a marketplace for their miners in their Discord. If you're thinking about checking them out, that was one of the top questions on the last video is where do I get it because Obelisk wasn't maintaining any stock to sell because all the miners had been had already been allocated. But with all that stuff in mind. Uh, you know, this is just an idea. He, this guy's he's buying these miners. He's asking for 1,400. Okay, so that actually is pretty much right in line with the calculation we just made. Here is Julio trying to sell his for two thousand dollars. That's going to be an SC1 Slim, aka batch two, with one board. Just to kind of give you a market idea of where things are at. Everything is always negotiable. Uh, there's bartering to be made in here. So. If you're really you know keen on getting one of these that would be one of the places to check along with ebay other than that guys there's really not too many other places to get these things would i get this miner i mean i'd say you know in this market this is actually one of the best bets for a miner the only giant variable here is if you know say bitmain they're still pissed off about what happened and they roll out 
a Psycoin ASIC miner on the new updated algorithm that Obelisk and Psycoin used, then that could be an issue because they called it the kill switch when they changed the algorithm and they said that they could only do it once. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Again, you know, only they do. And with all that stuff in mind, that would mean that this new mining algorithm could be flooded with miners and that would be very bad if you buy one of these. Again, that's pretty much worst case scenario and really the only bad thing that can happen. Obelisk, I truly don't believe is gonna flood their basically monopolized market with miners. It's gonna be pretty obvious if they do and thus they will never sell another miner again. Well, it's actually not true people buy anything in a bull market, but they wouldn't sell any more miners in a bear market. With their upcoming Grin Miner, for example, I don't think that, well, they wanna ruin their reputation because they're looking to sell that miner and I'm sure they have other things underway in development. At the end of the day, I think that this is a nice miner. I love the aesthetics of it, it looks so cool. Uh, the black, the red, it has a good just touch feel to it. Much more enjoyable than those just cheap, very basic ant miners chassis, for example. Some people think it's stupid that I care about stuff like that. Personally, I like to evaluate every aspect of a product, well, you know, from its performance to its presentation and everything in between. So I think they look great. Using the slim design, it uses those 120 millimeter fans that are very annoying. This miner does have a higher pitched whine that can get a little old. Depending where you're deploying this miner, it doesn't really matter. I have mine in my garage, actually right under me right now. You can't hear it with the garage door closed again. I like these miners. I think they're doing a good job. I think they're pushing the envelope. I think they lead ASIC miners as far as branding goes. I like that you know they're located here as opposed to in China. And I think they're good for the space overall. Again, I'm sure I'm gonna get some negative flack in this video for talking positively about them when they've done some things that can be viewed negative. I get that. And I'm not saying they're angels or anything or I agree with everything they've done. But at the end of the day, it's also fun to have some stuff that's interesting. Look what Bitmain did. They ran every algorithm they could into the ground and that's it. They extracted as much money in crypto as they could and that's it. And they just leave. I don't really need to say anything more about it. So ultimately guys, this is just my review and my findings of the machine. At the end of the day, it's performing a little bit under what it's supposed to be, but that should be fixed very soon, you know, per everything they've said and released. And with all that said, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. And I hope you're excited that you watch this video and for the Voscoin channel, because if you are, you should totally hit that thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Leave a comment below. And I just want to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I just want to be with you. Yeah, I just want to be with you. I just want to dance.